Hey guys, what's up? So this video is brought to you by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. If you guys are trying to get into software development, iOS development, software QA, and other stuff, check out the link in the description tab below. They are offering courses. Um, you can actually live on campus over there. They are hooked up with employers around the country, um, around the world really, and they're going to help you try to find your first job in this industry. So uh, make sure you give them a look, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp, and the link is in the description tab below. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm talking about the status of CSS and really um, the CSS preprocessors that we're using in the industry as of 2019. Um, and really it boils down to just a few, like there's a handful of them, but the number one being SAS and then the number two being less. But there are two other front runners, one being Stylus and then the other one being Post CSS. Um, they're working towards the same goals, which is ultimately about bringing more functionality to CSS. Um, CSS itself is just a... Uh, specification we use it to style different uh, different things on our HTML web page so it's not really a programming language it's considered a style sheet language but it does have its own specific syntax like you can see over here on the right hand side of this h1 here this is all the CSS that's being applied from this style.css file so the reason why these languages ultimately exist though is that there is a problem with CSS and the fact that it's not very reusable CSS 4.0 is not even on the horizon um, they are making some additions to the CSS 3.0 um, series uh, version of the specification, and browsers are slowly starting to catch up to everything that CSS 3.0 offers, um, which is really shocking considering the fact that CSS 3.0 has been talked about as long as I've been a developer, so roughly nine years or so, um, and we still have browsers that we have to worry about that don't support CSS 3. That really sucks. Uh, but you know, hopefully with these auto updating browsers, you know, really with the, the advent of like Chrome, Mozilla, um, and then obviously um, Edge, you know, being, I think starting with IE 11, Microsoft started auto updating like Chrome and, and Firefox. So we don't have to worry about people lagging behind um, with old browser support. But anyway, that, that's always been such a, such a nightmare. But CSS3, yeah, it takes a long time when we have these new specifications to get introduced in um, and then to have all the, the support. And we see that with JavaScript as well. That's why you hear about ES6 and ES7. But a lot of that stuff still doesn't work across platforms, uh, across all browsers. And, um, and all browsers behave differently too. So you can have like a Chrome browser that behaves differently on Android and iOS versus something else. And, uh, and those things can be a real difficult problem. And when you're speaking business and money and things like that, you have to go with the tried and true things that work. But anyway, um, enough rambling on about that. CSS 3.0 though, um, still doesn't have the ability to have variables. It doesn't have the ability to have functions inside of your CSS that could have computations based on, uh, you know, data passed in. So those are all the things that that these preprocessor libraries are giving to us out of the box. So th the reusability there goes a long way. And let me give you an example of uh, of variable re reusability within SAS. So if you have Visual Studio Code, you're going to want to go to your extensions and then type in SAS to make sure you have the proper syntax highlighting. And you're going to want this Robin Bentley one with over a million downloads. And then to actually get started with SAS, all you have to do is have uh, Node installed. So you have NPM, the package manager, and you're going to say uh, install. So I'm still typing with uh, 10 stitches in my hand. Um, and then hyphen G for global, and then just type in SAS. And that's going to, this is the easiest way just to get started. A lot of people, um, there's a lot of confusion with SAS because you'll read about like Webpack and Babel and how to get all that stuff working properly together. And um, and, and then you hear about CSS modules as well, and all that stuff can add a lot of complication, but this is just the quickest way to get involved in SAS and a CSS preprocessor language, and really the most popular one that's used by the most companies. So now in order to use SAS, I would just go over to VS Code. I'm going to just add a new file here, test.scss, which is for the SAS extension. And then here, what I'm going to do is assign a variable name. This is where if I prepend um, whatever name I have with a dollar sign, that's for variables within SAS. And here I could say like, primary red and then this equals we're just going to say the color red so now if i want to go ahead and have uh, this style be used i can say you know what i want my h1s to now say you know what i want the color to be primary red and you can see it actually auto fills and everything like that so now we're actually using a variable name and the reason why this is important is because you could identify all of these uh, primary styles that your website has and you would put them in a specific file like one specific file and that one specific file could just be reused over and over again. And that way, when you go to rescan or redesign your website, you're just updating variables. Um, and it's just a much more modular way of being able to handle uh, CSS that can get really out of control when you have 
hundreds of developers, you know, adding inline styles and in page styles and like adding external style sheets all over the place and things like that. So um, SAS really gives us a lot of just the variables alone give CSS a lot more power. Um, so again, all these preprocessor processor languages are very similar in nature. So like I'm not going to demo all of them, but you're going to find similar functionality in all of them. So now in order to actually use that compile to compile that that SAS file, we're going to go to the directory where it's located and you just say SAS um, hyphen hyphen watch. And then the name of the file that you actually want to watch, which is test.scss. Sorry, again, I have like stitches all through my fingers, like it's messed up. Uh, and then you're going to name the output output file. So I'll just do test.css. So here you're going to see it's compiled. It's waiting for any additional changes that you make to it. And now we have these two additional files. So you go over here, you have the source maps that allows for easier debugging. So you can actually debug your, um, your actual um, SAS file before it gets compiled down to the CSS. So that's what this map is, is doing. And that's built in by default. But you can ultimately see that it, um, it's using this variable and it assigned it to a simple H1. So if I went ahead and added like an index HTML page and try to reference my CSS, you would see that it works. So I went ahead and created a simple index page and pulled it up and you can see that it's working. So again, say you needed to change this somewhere. If you had like a config file or, the, or this was in a database or something like that, you could ultimately, um, you know, dynamically change the, the values whatever, wherever you want just because SAS can just recompile and reference it. It's, it's a much easier way of dealing with very, very complex CSS. So, okay, we want to change this to blue now and we go to our website and refresh it and it's blue. So another thing that SAS has and a lot of these other preprocessors is nesting and the nesting is a lot easier for people to reason about than normal CSS when it comes to um, how to apply CSS you know, in, 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 in the right fashion when it comes to nested elements versus um, you know classes or elements with multiple classes and things like that. So in this simple case of the unordered list of just one list item, a lot of people find it a lot easier in SAS to be able to say, you know what, I want to say UL, and then inside of curly braces, instead of having to deal with any sort of dot syntax like in normal CSS, you could just say, uh, let me go ahead and nest this all the way down to the, uh, to the anchor, and then we'll change the font size to something like ridiculous to like 240 pixels. And you can see it's this, uh, yeah, there you go. So a lot of people find it easier to deal with CSS in that nested fashion. So I also mentioned that it had the ability to have functions. Here's just a simple image logo for Python. And in SAS, I can go ahead and create this dynamic function that takes in a value. And the value is actually the, the property value that, you, that you're putting on um, this transform. So we have the ability to pass in the rotate onto that. And if I go ahead and reference the you know add my my class logo to my index.html here i can go ahead and use that dynamic value and you can see it rotates those functions are actually called mixins in sas and the reason why they're so good is because you can have a team that identifies a bunch of them and that you end up importing into your file and if you're setting like an h1 or something like that you could just simply pass in maybe a few properties or something like that. Like, okay, I want it to be this specific height or something like that, but then it's going to spit back all these different styles and everything that you're going to end up applying. Um, and those dynamic values, um, like, like I said, it's, it's very helpful for reuse. And the other thing I want to demo real quick, and this is probably another very helpful reusable feature, if not the most helpful is that it has this extends functionality. So again, you could have some team that's like saying, um, what are all the common H ones look like? So we're going to say like uh, common, H1, this is the, the name of our shared. And then we can go ahead and just give it a few things like font, family, uh, I'll give it Georgia, and then uh, font style, uh, we'll do it italic. So now in order to use it, I would just say at extend, and then the name of whatever it is uh, that, that you've imported or whatever you're referencing. And that's going to apply all the basic styles, and you can you ha you'll have the ability to override them, obviously, if you place any sort of overridden styles down below it. Uh, but this can all be just imported e externally from some sort of um, you know external team, UX team, you know designers, web developers that are much better at CSS and things like that. Um, and and the actual backend developers or web developers can just start referencing all this stuff. So SAS gives that that ability. That's why a lot of companies adopt it. Um, and it's not just SAS, but Less again does the same thing. Um, and then some of those other play, uh, CSS uh, preprocessors I mentioned as well. So do I think CSS preprocessor languages are worth learning in um, 2019? I, I, you know, I definitely do. 
I think um, depending on whatever sort of profession you're in, you may or may not actually deal with it. I went through a lot of my career and I, I haven't seen it and it's been around for a long time now. So I think um, for, for less, it's been around since like 2009 or maybe that's SAS or whatever, but it's been around for a long time, uh, but it, it relatively slow adoption, but there's clearly a lot of benefits that CSS itself lacks. Now, some of the downsides to SAS is that you used to have to download like Ruby and install Ruby to use Compass to compile it. And a lot of people are like, screw that. And you have companies that don't want to deal with that sort of overhead, things like that. So if you have like .NET shops or Java shops, maybe they don't want to, you know, install Ruby and, you know, deal with, you know, the, having, to, you know, security issues or whatever, who knows whatever it is, but certain companies want to deal with specific stacks and things like that. So I think that part of that coupling, I think, was part of the slow adoption for SAS. Uh, and, um, but now with like Node, everybody's using Node and you can just easily install it like a Node module, just like I showed you. And um, anybody can get up and running with it. Now it gets a little bit more complicated when you're trying to get all that configured with Webpack and Babel and get all that stuff working together. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Uh, if there's any other preprocessor languages that you guys recommend, please leave a comment because I'm always curious what you guys are like hearing out there as well. So, um, all right. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.